All right, here we go. Question number 13 in our college algebra, homework number five in my lab math. And the instructions say solve. And so this time I'm noticing that we have an inequality. And this looks like a quadratic with an x squared. So we have a, a polynomial inequality. More specifically, it is a quadratic inequality. And I've got that written down up here in this upper right-hand window. Let's show how to work that out. So since this inequality is quadratic, we want to kind of attack it like it's a quadratic equation. We want to set it equal to 0, or in this case, greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to solve uh, using one of the techniques that we have for solving a quadratic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x and the negative 8, and I'm going to bring them over, and that'll make this side 0. Okay, so when the x comes over, it's going to make negative x combining with negative 2x to give negative 3x. The negative 8 is going to come over and make a plus 8 that's going to combine with negative 12, and that's going to give negative 4. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. And then I've got this quadratic uh, inequality that uh, is now set greater than or equal to 0. And the fastest way to solve a quadratic, in my opinion, is by factoring. So we're going to see if this will factor. So to read the signs, if the last sign is negative, these signs are different. x and x give me the x squared. And are there numbers that multiply to make 4 that subtract and make 3? And the answer is yes. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 1 minus 4, negative 3. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So this factors. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to set each factor equal to 0. And that's going to give me our critical points. So moving the 1 and the 4, that's going to say x equal negative 1 and x equal 4. And like I said, we're going to call those critical points. Because this is an inequality, we have to figure out where on the number line this is going to shade. So let's go to the number line. We've got our criti critical points, negative 1 and 4. Uh, since our inequality is greater than or equal to, that means these are going to be solid dots. They're going to be included in the solution set. And to determine which of these three sections to shade, we're going to need test points. Okay, So I need a number less than negative 1. Uh, anything will work. I'm going to go with negative 5. And then I'm going to, you know what, let's make those test points a different color just so we can tell <clears throat> that they're test points. So negative 5 is a test point because it's less than negative 1. I need a number between negative 1 and 4. Uh, 0 is in between there, and 0 is easy to work with, so I want to pick 0. And then I need a number bigger than 4. Uh, again, let's say 5. It can be anything as long as it's bigger than 4. And then what I want to do is I want to take these test points back to the factored form. And I'm going to test them to see if we get a true or a false statement. OK, so we're going to plug our test points back into the inequality. I like to go where it's factored because it's a little bit easier to test it and see if it's true or false. So here we go with the negative 5 first. Plugging in negative 5 for x, negative 5 plus 1 times negative 5 minus 4. We want to know, is that greater than or equal to 0? So negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. Negative times a negative makes a positive. I don't really care what it is. I know it's positive. And is a positive number <clears throat> greater than or equal to 0? That is true. 
And so that tells me that negative five, that test point produces a true statement, and then everything to the left of negative one is going to be a solution. Because if I plug it in, it's going to give me a true statement. Now let's check zero. So zero plus one times zero minus four, is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, that's going to be one times negative four, which is going to be a negative number. And is a negative number greater than or equal to zero? That's false. Negative numbers are not greater than or equal to zero. So the zero gives me a false, and that means that nothing, no number between negative one and four is going to be a solution. Now let's check our last test point, five. Positive five plus one, positive five minus four, greater than or equal to zero. That's going to be six times one. Six times one is six, which is definitely a positive number. And we know that a positive number is greater than or equal to zero, so that is true. And that means that everything in this area is going to shade. That's going to be solution. And just as a little helpful pointer here, in most cases, the true and falses will alternate, okay? Most, not all, most cases. So here they do alternate, TFT. And now to identify the solution. Uh, if I was to write this in interval notation, and we'll do it in a different color right here, that would say everything from negative infinity up to negative one, including negative one, together with, remember the U is the glue that sticks the two pieces together, and then everything from four to infinity. So this would be our answer in interval notation. Luckily, my lab math over here, it does say to write your answer in interval notation. And so we're going to have everything from negative infinity to negative one. We need a bracket, and the bracket comes from the keyboard, just so you know. Union bracket for to infinity. All right, fingers crossed. Oh, all right, there you go. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.